Hi there, everyone. Kristen DeFrancisco, Assistant Superintendent, Dunstable Regional School District. And today I am here to share a little bit with you specifically about feedback loops. Feedback loops can be a focus area for you to be thinking about as you're wanting to engage students and motivate students really anytime we're teaching, but also during this time when we're balancing in-home learners and at-school learners. And so talking a little bit about feedback loops, and if you watch the vlog generally about when you're approaching a SMART goal, you heard a little about pick choosing areas that are going to be areas that engage and motivate students. So feedback loops are going to be great. Helping students to see that they're going to get feedback on their work, um, they're going to be expected to do something with that feedback, at which point they will probably get additional feedback. You know, being able to give this to students and to um, have them start practicing this lifelong exchange of feedback and responding to feedback is really a gift. Uh, if we can help students understand that there is more than one chance we are teaching them persistence and grit. And so just giving that initial feedback and then never revisiting it, it doesn't create that loop. Um, if we start to get students used to getting that loop, um, they're gonna be looking for more and more feedback. Again, when you plan a professional goal, if you have watched the initial vlog about steps to take when planning a professional goal, you are watching something, reading something, and writing something. So for feedback loops, well, first of all, you're watching something right now. I'll talk a little bit about my experience with feedback loops. Uh, it's been very powerful for me to use as an educator. Um, I think what helped me use them the most was actually carving out space for my students and now for those leaders that I evaluate or teachers that I evaluate, educators that I evaluate. How do you spend time with my feedback? The things that I noticed, wondered, watched, am curious about, how did I give you time to actually take a look at that and, and, and turn it into a conversation? Uh, feedback friendly. It takes a while. Uh, you know, I often would ask my students, Are you, can I give you feedback? I often ask adults, can I give you feedback? Uh, giving feedback to somebody about something they're doing is personal. And so asking that question is an important step as you're initiating feedback loops. Um, if you are ready, for me to give you feedback, me first or you first. I wanna know what you were thinking when you delivered a lesson. I wanna know what a student was thinking when they wrote a piece or when they worked a problem or when they um, reflected or made comments or performed a science lab. You know, that helps to frame the way that I'm going to give feedback. And sometimes when students have a chance to talk first, you know, the conversation is started um, with a little less risk so I always ask, me first or you first. Then I also ask, should I say it or should I write it? Sometimes students prefer to see it in writing and sometimes students prefer for you to say it to them, um, adults as well. And so that is another strategy or trick. And then five minutes for feedback. That is always something that I try to embed in any workshop or uh, now that, I'm leading, that I lead workshops. But even when I, when I was a teacher in classrooms, where am I embedding that time for students to really look at the feedback, have spend some time with it, not just in a pass back or you know, a comment on a Google Doc. I'm actually embedding that feedback time. So here's a little something that you just watched about feedback. And you know, um, as we learn from each other about feedback, I'm sure there's other colleagues that use it that you might be able to talk with about how they're using feedback. Read something. So you're going to be uh, reading something or I'm suggesting that you read something that's small. It doesn't need to be huge. You don't have to read everything about feedback loops in order to be able to initiate them. What are you gonna do to take um, that first step? So I've made a suggestion, an article from Edutopia. It is in the feedback, a feedback folder that we have here in Groton Dunstable and it starts small. And I, I'll show you that article before we're done with this vlog. And then there's also resources uh, in Groton Dunstable at the bottom of your feedback PD. And I, those dig a little deeper and I can show those to you. Um, when you're looking for a resource about feedback, obviously you want to look at the date. You want to see when it was from and you want it to be from a reputable source, just like you would talk with your students about if they were doing research. Write something. Write and reflect. Why did you choose this focus area? Think about it. 
Um, I've made a suggestion. Again, that's that educational, um, that is in the feedback folder. And you might be writing and reflecting about that, or you might be writing or reflecting about something that you did dug a little deeper. You might reflect, this isn't actually really where I want to go with this. I don't want to do feedback loops right now for whatever reason. I'm going to choose something else and that's okay. Um, but you also might come out of that research and that reading saying, oh, this is really where I wanna be starting to engage and motivate my students. Who are you checking in with? Join a think tank. There are people I am sure across the district that are gonna be choosing feedback loops. How do you connect with those people? Who are those people? Identify them, talk with them, check in with them see how it's going. It is so much better to engage in professional goals together. And so we can be helpful in providing um, ways for you to do that and for you to be talking about the work that you are doing. So in review, you are going to watch something. You've already done that with me. You are going to read something. I will show you your options in just a moment. You will write something. I will show you a suggested template for you to do that. You will dig deeper. If you want to use Feedback PD and the workspace from, um, you really, you can, you can do a search on your own as well, but we'll provide, we've provided you with some resources. And check out the sample goal sheet provided, which I will show you in just a minute as well. You've got this. This is going to be a great adventure, a great journey for you as you're looking at feedback. Um, the Something to Read is an article from Edutop Edutopia, and it's called Starting Feedback Loops and that resource is available to you. Um, something to write about after you've thought about feedback loops. This is a space for you to do some thinking. Why feedback loops? What is your entry point? What makes you excited about it? What makes you nervous about it? Think about those things as you're getting ready to craft your goal. We also had your feedback PD session. And if you remember at the bottom here, there are lots of different um, resources that you could be using. So you can take a, um, a look at those as well. That might be your read about. And then you have some space to think about those, but really your something to write about could already have been fulfilled through this template here. And finally, what does it look like to write a feedback loop goal? You will recognize this template from the overview of professional goals, a specific feedback loop. As you can see, I've given an example here, talked about why specifically that this is a really important topic. And the sentence that I came up with after thinking about it was using feedback loops helps students to persist through assignments to create their best work. Um, I brainstormed a bit about what would be measurable about my goal. And as I did that, I came to the sentence, this is a ninth grade example. My ninth grade students need to be able to see their writing growth based on our common assessment rubric by creating several drafts of writing. During their edits, each student will receive my feedback to guide them to reread their draft and work through different lenses. Following their rewrite, students will receive additional feedback about their changes. Talked a little bit about why I think this is achievable for me. Um, I'm talking about why this is relevant. I give myself a little sentence starter. During the three week duration of our first writing assignment of the term, again, a starter. And then I put it all together. I talk about what was specific. I talk about what was measurable. I give myself my sentence starter and I come up with a goal that sounds like this. Using feedback loops helps students to persist through assignments to create their best work. During the three week duration of our first writing assignment of the term, the ninth grade students in freshman writing will be able to see their writing growth based on our common assessment rubric through the creation of several drafts of writing. During their edits, each student will receive educator feedback to guide them to reread their draft work through different lenses. Following their rewrite, students will receive additional feedback about their changes. This will continue through to the final draft. This will be repeated with each assignment following. I uh, talk about action steps. There are eight of them here. And then I talk about some sample evidence. There's certainly more that you can use, but I talk about four of them here. This is just a suggestion. It's just a start. It's a consideration. It's a model. You can certainly consider using it. Um, you could also adapt it 
um, to what would work better for your, where, what area are you going to use feedback loops? But certainly this hopefully will get you started in thinking about how you craft that goal. Um, and remember, your reading, your writing, and your watching is giving you that background knowledge to really get, dig a little bit deeper into why you've chosen feedback loops as your focus for your SMART professional goal to help students feel engaged and motivated in school this year. Thank you for watching and good luck with feedback loops.